Okay, the envelope, please. Oh, it feels like it's been a while since I said that. All right, let's see what we got happening today that we're going to talk about for who knows how long, and it'll keep on going. going. How much does output impedance matter? Uh, okay, presumably on the amplifier. Sure, I guess you could talk about it on a preamp or a line level device a little bit too, but yeah, I think we're talking about amplifiers driving speakers. Yeah. Output impedance of a of a, an audio amplifier. We might as well kind of cover the whole matter. spectrum on that though, including headphones, how much they convey into that situation. Well, the headphone it's, impedance. It's related, right? Yeah, sure. If you have really high impedance headphones, the output impedance isn't significant. And that's one of the reasons why people have high output impedance, high impedance headphones. Yeah. But with a conventional headphone, 40, 50, 60, 80 ohms, somewhere in that range. Outpedance, uh, it can matter, especially if you have a more demanding headphone. Because there's actually two tricks to this one. A lot of people seem to link impedance with the difficulty to drive. They don't factor in sensitivity a lot of times. And if you have high sensitivity, you could get away with a lot of things. Uh, even if you have high impedance, they're not quite so challenging to drive, depending on what you're plugging it into. I think some of them might need more voltage or gain yeah. than they do power. Well, it depends so the on the limiting factor. Yeah, and there's, that's kind of tricky too, because it's complicated. Like yeah, a power, a bigger the, the bigger the more power the amp is rated for, typically the lower its output impedance needs to be to deliver that power, or basically you're delivering a current into a yeah. load. So yeah, you tend to see larger amps have lower output impedance. Usually. They also tend to have higher power ratings. Where, but there's also confusion gets confused with gain, where gain is just how many time how much is the signal amplified right. you know where the headphones not because it's like 300 ohms or whatever it's not demanding in terms of current it's not looking mm -hmm. it's not loading down the amplifier it's a high impedance there's actually a lot going on there so you need more voltage than you do power you just need more of a people confuse gain. gain with power too yeah it is confusing yeah you tend to get if you have power you have gain probably so they're kind of they're both one and the yeah. same for the most when it comes to audio amps but the vice versa, the opposite's not true. If you have, you don't necessarily have uh, power if you have gain. Right. Yeah. You hear that sometimes on portable gear. The volume will go too high, like the digital volume number will go too high, and it'll start clipping or distorting. And so you could keep putting the volume up, and maybe it'll get louder, but you'll start getting distortion on the more dynamic parts of the music, or you know, bass hits or something like that, or the track gets louder for whatever reason, and then the amplifier runs out of power. But it has the gain, right? So the volume keeps going. The gain's there, but yeah. it some runs of out of amps, power to drive. Some of the amps like the formula, and they got a lot of amps have gain switches. Yeah, you know, it's helpful. So yeah, because headphones are all over the map. So it kind of varies where you can have the volume, the, where your where your where your volume's going to sit, and noise to some extent too. Um, Wolfgang just did that review with that new German headphone amp, and he said it had an eight ohm output impedance. Oh right, and he was Which using it on twelve sixty six, and he says it didn't. It didn't do it, yeah, you know. Yeah. It just ran out of oomph. Yeah, eight ohms uh, is high. I mean, yeah, that's you know, it's really high for yeah, our headphones. For, yeah. yeah. So that was a pretty good example. I've never, I haven't seen anything that high recently. Some of these companies, are, what they were, they made the amp for their headphone. It's right? for their headphone. Yeah, it was some yeah. German company, and they also yeah. had a headphone. They have like one headphone. They one have amp. one headphone. Yeah. Yeah, and they made this amp for it, but their headphone was a higher impedance. Uh, it wasn't that high though. No, it was like sixty ohms or something. Now, like see, that. the eight ohm is. Is that's really that's high, high yeah, for, yeah. A, for a 50 or 60 ohm headphone. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Well, you know, when I see stuff like that and they decide that like an 8 or when they go a higher output impedance on the amp to specifically to drive their headphone, usually they're tailoring the sound of the headphone with yeah, the that's amp. Yeah, that's what he said. Which means the amp, that headphone probably won't sound good on an amp. Any other, on other, on real, on, on more better amps, it may sound worse. Yeah. Better being more power, more refinement because it, for whatever reason it's obviously... You can use output impedance of a, as a bit of a tone control. That's assuming that the headphones impedance is not flat. So let's say, for example, let's say the you know the headphone impedance varies as in, with frequency, right? So let's say in the highs the headphone impedance goes up, mm -hmm. right? Whatever it could, let's say 10 ohms, whatever. That's a lot. If as a percentage, it could be a lot. So now for a given volume setting on your amp. You know, the highs take more gain, take more volume to get at a similar level compared to the lows. Sure. Relative to like another headphone that doesn't 
very impedance like our planers don't. Well, they, what their headphone is a planer. So oh, is it? So <laughs> that ain't. Well, then it. it shouldn't be impedance. Yeah. So I'm not sure what they're doing there, other than you know I'm not sure what they're doing, because the higher output impedance, one thing it would do on an amp would tend to slow the bass down a bit, make it a bit more sluggish, a little less impactful. The amp doesn't have quite total control over that. So maybe it's just a, uh, that they like the character of it that way, for whatever reason, the sonic character. And, but <laughs> yeah, typically you want to see, you're really looking to try to get uh, like under an ohm if you can with a headphone yeah. amp. We yeah. probably should skim over the whole analysis there. So with output impedance, typically the lower the better on an amplifier. But you certainly get diminishing returns. And the higher the impedance the headphone, the less it matters. But that's not to say it doesn't matter, it just matters less. You want to get the ratio between the headphone and the amplifier as good as practical. But at some point, it kind of makes no difference. So, you know, it, some people, especially with distortion numbers, they try to eke out those last zeros and they try to get eight, nine zeros or whatever. And they try to get these impossibly low distortion numbers. But it's not like that with output impedance. It's not really that important. As long as you're at like, under an ohm, some fractional ohm, generally it's pretty good. It doesn't make a big difference past that yeah. for most people. I mean, output, output impedance is complicated in terms of uh, sure. how to explain it because you're not only dealing with the output impedance of the amp, but you're dealing with the impedance of the load or what you're connecting to the amp yeah. and how those two interact. One, one responds to the other, so to speak. I guess the best way to explain the output impedance of an amp is that you lower tends to be better. We got that down, lower impedance. Under Mostly, an ohm yeah. is good. Usually you're gonna have a, that means that amp's gonna be able to do more power, but there's no guarantee because that depends on how big the power supply is and all these other factors, but low output impedance is good. Damping, the, it adds that the lower the output impedance of the amp, the higher the damping factor, which means in, in a nutshell, that amp can control the headphone or the load better versus a higher output impedance which has less control and the bass tends to get a bit more loose let's say um, you know and again these are all variables because it depends on the headphone well I had personal taste some people might like well yeah. loose just that's you know, true out of control yeah. <laughs> kind of sound yeah. yeah we got a few customers that I know use pretty high output impedance amps on 1266 just because they like the amp, they like the sonic character it adds or whatever, yeah. which that's of course totally fine. Um, however, from a general perspective, lower output impedance is usually better. You hit a point where it doesn't really make a big impact and that depends on the ratio of the headphone impedance to the amplifier impedance. Yeah. Because if you have a high impedance headphone, then the output impedance doesn't matter quite as much. You could get away with maybe one or two ohms, but for our headphones, we're pretty standard impedance, 40, 50 ohms or so. And so we like to see under an ohm, yeah. half an ohm, quarter ohm. You could get well into the milli ohm range. And there's trade-offs to that with amps too. I mean, like when you look at the design of an amp to get a lower output impedance, you're usually paralleling a lot more output devices, you know, typically. So you've got more, more electronics there. And some people are more of a, when you're of the purest design, right, where you want it, where you're, yep. you're minimizing it. You know, a single tube is better than mm -hmm. 20 of them. Mm -hmm. You know, in a, in a parallel to get more power. So. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you're, there are trade-offs. You can't just say, okay, well, I can make an amplifier with 0.001 ohms output. Yeah, you sure. could, but it'll have 20 well, output devices per channel. Yeah, you know, it'll cost a lot more. Parallel, yeah, yeah, sure, and a big heat sink yeah. and probably a rather large power supply. And you're going to have to have some serious protection in there. What do they call it? The housekeeping circuitry to, uh, <laughs> to keep the thing from blowing up in case something goes wrong, mm. like, you know, an accidental short. The trade-offs of low output impedance is that, on a, on a dead short out, or something goes wrong with the headphone cable, or while you're plugging and plugging a quarter inch connector, you could accidentally momentarily short the the output of the amp. And if it's playing music at the time, it might not like that tone so much. You, you, it's a catastrophic catastrophic failure. It's drawing as much current as can out of power, but it's like remember the movie with the Krell and the Forbidden old sci-fi flick, yeah, Forbidden Planet. And they had gauges on the wall. Mm. That was every one was a power of ten higher than the next, yeah. all the way down a row, and rows of these gauges. Now that's a power supply, right? Uh -huh. Now if you had that in an amplifier and you shorted it, <laughs> <laughs> everything would be melted. Yeah, it would be like instantaneous <laughs> done, done. So there is a point where there are trade-offs involved with going lower. Sure. You know, and it's always a balancing act with these yeah, things, totally. as it tends to be. But from a consumer's perspective, where you're typically buying an amplifier that's available. 
they probably designed it around sensible guidelines. They probably designed it so it doesn't have super duper low output impedance just for the fun of it. It probably has the output impedance that makes sense for that type of circuit, that power level or whatever. Because of course, as a designer, you could design an amplifier that has incredibly low, near zero output impedance compared sure. to the headphone. Um, but it doesn't mean it's gonna sound good. Yeah, they so. tend to use tricks too. Like if you don't have a lot of output devices, isn't there like a bootstrapping or something? I, I forgot the old school. It's pretty design, easy to get low. But there's impedance. ways to use tricks to get lower output impedance. But you're again, you're trading off. You're always right. trading off something. You want to get good sonic fidelity while also having yeah. relatively low right. output impedance. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, like in a car. Yeah, keep you had a big engine to it. Yeah. But then it gets heavier, so you need more power. Right. right. And so at some point, it doesn't get faster. Yeah, yeah. Transmission's got to get bigger. The yeah, gear's sure. got to get bigger. Everything. And then yeah. it gets heavier again. Yeah. More power. It's the same thing. Yeah, you want the yeah. specific power to get better. Seems yeah. like these damn rockets are like that, man. I see. They see are see like Tesla's that. Tesla's flying, flying these bad boys, and it's mm. like it just seems like. What's well, way worse? You can't put rocket. enough yeah, fuel way in worse. the damn thing. Well, that is right. the problem. Yeah. Well, of course, as you add power, you typically add weight in a lot of situations. Well, fuel, it's the problem. Right. Weighs a lot. Yeah. So what you want to be able to do is lift the thing. Yeah. Until you burn it. <laughs> well, you want to get rid of it as quickly as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. It gets lighter as it goes up. That's, that's the key. <laughs> if it yeah. didn't, it would be screwed. It would not yeah. make it. But an amplifier doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, no. Neither yeah. no. does a pair of headphones. A little different. It doesn't yeah. change yeah. much. Yeah. But uh, what, what, what really is tricky with, I remember back in the day when we started doing this, we were working with Alex Cavelli. And yeah. Cavelli's will be like something like, you know how hard <laughs> it is to make an amplifier? I'm, I, I can't mm. do his voice so well because no, right. I haven't, I haven't right. heard you him in a few years. I lost his accent. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's talked slower, and it's, you know how hard it is to make an amplifier that can handle and like that wide range of impedances that these headphones have, from like yeah. 10 ohms to 600 ohms. I'm like, no, Alex, how hard is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it'd be like, but he was, uh, he said it's difficult because there's a, from the amplifier's perspective, um, you know, it's got to be stable through all these different loads. It, it, yeah. I mean, some amplifiers, you put 600 ohms on it, I'm talking more toward the speaker end of things, but and it you might as well have nothing hooked up to it. 600 is much, not yeah. low enough Unloaded, to load yeah. down the yeah. amp, and it, it gets unstable. Which so. some people are unaware, of, but in some well, typically intrinsic in most amplifier designs, if they're entirely unloaded, they're inherently unstable. Yeah, depends on the design, but a lot of times if there's absolutely no load, they're not stable, and they yeah. could they could go wildly. It's dependent on how they do the feedback in it, yeah. which of course the feedback circuit topology and the amount of feedback affects the sound quality. So again, it's always a trade-off. You could put gobs of feedback in there, and again, along with bootstrapping or whatever it was called back in the day when we were designing circuits, and you can lower the output impedance, you can lower distortion, but it'll sound like flat, like you'll lose harmonic richness, it's just the amp just sounds sterile type thing. Yeah. You know, so yeah, so there's all kinds of trade-offs involved, but, but, but in the end, I mean, you know, that's what the, that's what a good amplifier designer does. That's he takes the, all it of that into consideration. Weighs the trade-offs. Yeah, balances it all out, just like a good headphone designer, or a good car designer, a good yeah. engine yep. designer. You're always balancing the trade-offs to get to maximize each com each facet of it as much as possible. So anyway. Mm. I think we could ramble for about half an hour on this one. So. Yeah, <laughs> come right back full Might circle. Might be a good time to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, if you like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget to go back to the uh, other video, uh, comment on uh, the uh, Ranover 1266 to be entered for it. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.